Till now we have studied the reflection and transmission coefficient of normal incidence for the case of two semi-infinite media. The question now what will be the situation if we have a finite slab? So assuming that the incident wave is coming from region 1 which extend from z equal minus infinity to z equal minus l and is incident on a slab of thickness l which extend from z equal minus l to zero then after this slab there is another semi infinite space then from zero to infinity so now we have three different media one two and three and it is required to find out the reflection coefficient at the interface at z equal minus l in this case the total field inside the region 2 can be represented as a wave propagating in positive z plus wave propagating in backward z so the total field in region 2 can be represented as ex2 plus propagating in forward direction e to the power minus j beta to z plus ex2 0 minus multiplied by backward propagating function e to the power j beta to z and effectively both of them are unknown the corresponding magnetic field would be h y two zero plus propagating in four of the propagation e to the power minus g beta to z plus h y two zero minus with backward propagation constant e to the power g beta to z and the relation between the magnitude of the forward propagating magnetic field and forward propagating electric field is h y two zero plus would be e x two zero plus over eta two h y two zero plus would be e x two zero plus over eta two similarly h y two zero minus would be minus 1 over theta 2 multiplied by the amplitude of the backward propagating electric field e x 2 0 minus now at the interface z equals 0 these two propagating fields forward and backward propagating field are related to the reflection coefficient from the interface at z equals zero and this effectively the reflection from medium two to medium three so we are talking about a reflection coefficient for medium two to medium three equals eta three minus eta two over eta three plus eta two so the amplitude of the backward propagating field at the interface equal the amplitude of the forward propagating field at the interface multiplied by the reflection coefficient at the interface at z equals zero so ex2 minus would equal the reflection coefficient at the interface between the medium 2 and medium 3 multiplied by the amplitude of the forward propagating field ex2 plus so in this case all these field components are defined now in terms of the forward propagating electric field in medium 2 because the backward propagating is determined in terms of the forward and the magnetic field is determined in terms of the electric field so the magnetic field of the forward propagating field is determined in terms of 
the amplitude of the electric, the forward electric field, and the backward magnetic field is determined in terms of the backward electric field, which is determined in terms of the forward propagating electric field. Okay. Alright. Now we are going to introduce a new definition which is the wave impedance. The wave impedance is the amplitude of the phasor electric field over the phasor magnetic field at any point inside medium two. So the wave impedance which will be called eta w would be e x s2 over h y s2 so will be all this item over all this item and because the electric field and the magnetic field are function of z inside medium 2 so the wave impedance in this case is not a constant value it is a function of z so this is the wave impedance inside medium two. now by applying the relation between e x2 minus and e x2 plus as gamma and also the relation between h y two plus and h y two minus and e x two plus. So we can arrange all these items of the wave impedance in terms of e x two plus. So in this case, we are going to replace e x two minus by gamma two three multiplied by e x two plus and h y two plus will be replaced by one over eta two e x two plus and h y two minus will be replaced by minus one over eta two gamma two three e x two plus and by eliminating e x2 plus we can find out that the wave impedance in this case simply obtained as eta2 multiplied by e to the power minus g beta 2 z plus gamma 2 3 multiplied by e to the power g beta 2 z over e to the power minus g beta 2 z minus gamma 2 3 e to the power g beta 2 z so this is a wave impedance of medium two at any point z from z equal zero to z equal minus three. And this actually corresponds to the magnitude of the electric field to the magnitude of the magnetic field at any point z inside this region. Okay. Okay. Now let us remember that gamma two three was eta three minus eta two over eta three plus eta two. So we can replace this gamma two three by this fraction. And by multiplying both the denominator and denominator by gamma three plus gamma two and expanding the exponential term as cosine plus g sine so we can obtain that the wave impedance eta w as a function of z would equal eta 2 multiplied by gamma 3 plus gamma 2 cosine beta 2 z minus g sine beta 2 z plus eta 3 minus Eta two multiplied by cosine beta two z plus j sine beta two z and the denominator and the, sorry the denominator will be the same except that we have a negative sign here. Now by arranging 
uh, eta three terms together and eta two terms together, we can obtain that the wave impedance eta w would be eta two multiplied by eta three cosine beta two z eta three cosine beta two z plus eta three cosine beta two z uh, minus j eta two sine beta z minus j beta two beta z minus j beta two beta z and the remaining terms will be cancelled each other over eta two cosine beta two z minus j eta three sine beta two z. This actually we have taken eta three as a common factor and obtain what will be the multiplication factor and we have get we have got uh, eta two as a common factor and we have seen what will be the multiplication factor. So we obtain this simple relation. So this is a wave impedance of medium 2 in the region from z equal 0 to z equal minus 3. Now, by applying the boundary condition at z equal minus L, at z minus equal, z equal minus L, we have the incident field and the reflected field and the wave in medium 2 which is governed by the wave impedance at z equal minus l. So, in this case, the tangential electric field at the left hand side of the interface would be the incident field EXS1 plus plus the reflective field EXS1 minus it would equal the total tangential field at the right interface, at the right of the interface, it would be EX2S at Z equal minus L. And similarly, the tangential magnetic field boundary condition, the total tangential field left to the interface equals the total tangential magnetic field right to the interface. And effectively, the relation between the magnetic field and the electric field is that the magnetic field of the forward propagating in medium 1 would be the amplitude of the electric field over eta 1 while the amplitude of uh, the magnetic field of the reflected magnetic field would be minus the magnitude of the reflected electric field over eta 1 here the magnitude of the magnetic field in medium 2 would be related to the amplitude of the electric field by the wave impedance at the distance z equal minus l. So we are going to apply the wave impedance at z equal minus l and use it to find the magnetic field at the interface. Now, by applying these boundary conditions, we can find out the magnitude of the reflected field in terms of the magnitude of the electric field as EX1 minus over EX1 plus would be eta n minus eta 1 over eta n plus eta 1, where eta n is the wave impedance at the interface. So, eta n the input impedance is eta wave at distance z equal minus l. And eta wave at z equal minus l, we are going to replace the value of z by minus l. So eta n in this case would be eta 2, eta 3 cosine beta 2 multiplied by minus l. And because cosine minus x is cosine x, so it is cosine beta 2 l. Minus j eta 2 sine beta 2 minus l. Sine minus l is minus sine l. So minus minus would be plus plus j eta 2 sine beta 2 l over eta 2 cosine beta 2 l plus j eta 3 sine beta 2 l. So in this case, 
the reflection coefficient would be not the characteristic impedance of medium two, but the wave impedance of medium two. And it is required from the wave impedance of medium two, the wave impedance at the interface. So the reflection coefficient gamma would be theta n minus theta one over theta n plus theta one. Where theta n is the wave impedance at z equal minus n. So by following these steps, we can find out the reflection coefficient of a dielectric slab or a slab. It doesn't matter, shouldn't be pure dielectric. Effectively, we can generalize this uh, relation for multiple interface and we will see it in the following uh, video. So, assume that we have cascaded slabs, so what will be the reflection from cascaded slab? Okay. Alright.